In the previous video, we, we introduced linear subspaces and bases. Uh, today, today, we'll talk a bit more about the bases and then the move to study or the determinants of a matrix. And so in the book, it's chapter 3.2, and then uh, next video will be chapters 3.1 and 3.3. A linearly independent subset of Rn must have at most n elements, and a spanning set of Rn must have at least n elements. So every basis of Rn has exactly n elements. For an uh, n element subset v1 through vn of Rn, the following statements are equivalent. Those vectors span Rn. Uh, these vectors are linearly independent. Uh, they form a basis. The square matrix whose columns are the vectors vi is invertible. So let's uh, break them down a bit in a bit, uh, more, more detail. So from a basis v1 through vk of linear subspace v of rn, we can define a linear map uh, which sends x to a uh, matrix which is formed whose columns are vectors v1 through vk, which is multiplied by the uh, by vector x on the right. So this is this linear map has by construction range v, the big capital V, because uh, little vi's span the big V, and it is one to one, since uh, those vectors are linearly independent. A basis for V is essentially the same as a one-to-one uh, -one linear map with the range V. This is also called an isomorphism from RK to V. So, or, or, and the spaces are called isomorphic. Um, let's talk about the size of the ba of a basis. Uh, Suppose given two bases, V1 through VK and W1 through WL, where a priori K and L are different integers, of the linear subspace uh, V of Rn. Then consider this map T from Rk to Rn uh, as before. Uh, since T is one to one uh, linear transformation with range V, there exists a unique element of RK, which maps to uh, each of the WIs, the pre-image. So we call it T inverse of WI. And of course, by construction, if you apply, apply uh, transformation T to this uh, effector, we'll get back WI. Um, so given linear dependency, um, of these vectors, uh, we obtain that uh, zero is equal to T of sum of CI T inverse WI, and then using uh, linearity properties, we get that this is equal to CI times WI. So uh, the since the WIs are linearly independent, those uh, CIs must be equal to zero. And so the, there's only a trivial linear combination of vectors, which gives you the zero vector. Uh, therefore, the uh, T inverse of WI are linearly independent. Now, since the Ws span big V, each uh, vector Vj can be written uh, as such. So it can be composed as the linear combination of, uh, for every I, for every J, it can be composed as the linear combination of Wi's. Now, remember that uh, we can, uh, also understand it as uh, the, uh, by definition, it's the uh, image of the, if you act with transformation T on the basis vectors uh, EJ, we get VJ. So we can write it, uh, the T of EJ uh, as follows. So T of EJ is equal to this combination. And then we can substitute for, uh, for WI like this, right? So it's a trivial transformation. So we compose T inverse with T. So WI is the same as T of T inverse of WI. And then using linear properties, we can take out this T outside. Uh, and because it's one-to-one, -one, 
uh, we, we can, uh, so we have T of EJ is equal to T of this combination in the parentheses. And because it's one-to-one, -one, we can just uh, ignore the T and compare the arguments in the parentheses. Uh, and that tells you that the span of the, uh, of those factors, T inverse of WI contains all EJs uh, and therefore it contains the entire uh, RK. And because uh, EJs, they form the basis. So EJs are canonical, uh, this is so-called canonical basis. It's vectors 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, et cetera, and so on. Thus, there are as many Ws as elements of basis of RK, i.e. K of them, right? Which is the same as number, number of uh, VJs. Uh, so the uh, script L, which we had a couple of slides ago, is to say is equal to K. And we have learned that every basis for a linear subspace has the same number of elements. And by definition, this common number is called the dimension of the linear space. So a dimension of the linear space is the uh, number of basis factors in any basis. So all bases, uh, all, all bases have the same number of factors. Couple of theorems. First, uh, rank nullity theorem. If A is a matrix with R rows and C columns, that is, determines a linear transformation from RC to RR, then the dimensions of the column space and the null space add up to C. But it's a beautiful theorem because the proof is literally one sentence. So uh, as we know from the echelon form of this matrix, the column space has dimension equal to the number of pivot columns, and the null space has the dimension equal to the number of non-pivot columns. So we just add them together, you get C. Another one-liner, row, rank, and column rank. The dimension of the space spanned by the rows of a matrix is equal to the dimension of the space spanned by the columns. Well. Not surprisingly, both are equal to the number of pivots. Right? It doesn't matter how you count them. So now, uh, for the rest of this uh, video, we'll focus on square matrix. And then the following uh, statements are equivalent. So the mat matrix is invertible. Rows are linearly independent. Rows span. Um, rows form a basis. Columns likely uh, linearly independent. Columns span columns form a basis, uh, and then this transformation is one-to-one, -one, uh, and uh, this transformation is onto. So a lot of things come together when the matrix is uh, of the square form, when number of rows is equal to the number of columns. Okay, let's, let's make a quick review. So you pause if you need to. Is this an invertible matrix? Well, it's a clear no. I mean, uh, well, basically, you cannot divide by zero. Uh, how about this one? Yes, right. And it, this is a, the, the matrix is, is equal to its inverse in this case. It's the identity matrix two by two. How about this matrix? Well, uh, you can use one of any of the properties from the previous slide. Well, uh, so you can we can check this is non-invertible. So, for example. The second, the second column is the uh, multiple of the first one. So the columns are not linearly independent, and therefore they do not form a basis in, uh, in R2. However, if you take this one, it's going to be OK. Right? Columns are linearly independent. Now, uh, it's a quick reminder. So we, we, we talked about this during the discussion, but nevertheless, uh, is this matrix invertible? Uh, Okay, although, okay, no, no, yeah, so in this matrix invertible, now we need to look at several cases. So when A is not equal to zero, then we can do the uh, row reduction procedure like this, multiplying the second row by A uh, and the first by, by negative C, we can add them together and get this matrix here, AD, AB, zero, AD minus BC. So the invertibility implies when the, uh, it sort of stands when uh, this coefficient AD minus BC is not equal to zero. 
power if a is equal to zero, we just need to check other entries and uh, it will be invertible if and only if B, uh, A, and C uh, are not both uh, zero. So in short, the matrix is invertible if and only if AD minus BC is not equal to zero. And this brings us to the notion of the determinant of the matrix. So by definition, uh, the determinant of the two by two matrix is this combination. So, well, let's do some calculations. So here the determ determinant is clearly zero. Here the determinant is equal to one. Here it's zero. And here it's negative one. You see, in, in two of those examples, the determinant was equal to zero. Um, some more examples. So identity matrix three by three, it is invertible, right? Um, this matrix here, which is sort of drawn in the echelon form is also invertible, right? There are three pivot columns, uh, sort of this sort of lower triangular matrix. Is also invertible. You can sort of you can uh, reshuffle those uh, rows, and then it will look like an uh, in an echelon form. How about this? No, because first two rows are linearly uh, dependent; they're equal to each other. Uh, this one, well, it's a bit more subtle, but you can check here that the uh, this the third row. Is uh, is the factor of two like a, a factor of two multiple of the first row? So the, therefore, again, they're not linearly dependent, linearly independent. Uh, and this one again. So the uh, you can check that the these two you can add them together. Uh, yeah. So these are also not not linearly independent. Uh, the, the the rows are not linearly independent, and therefore the matrix is not uh is not invertible okay. so for example you can multiply the uh, you can add the first row and third row and multiply second row by negative two and you'll see that they will all cancel Okay, now uh, we'll look at the example of the determinant two by two. Now let's look at the three by three. Um, so that brings us, so the, uh, the, the uh, uh, answering the question of when this matrix three by three with nine components is invertible brings us to the uh, notion of the determinant of the three by three matrix. And of course, the, the ter determinant exists for any square matrix. There is a combinatorial formula uh, but sort of it's we'll talk about this uh, some other time. Um, assume a is not equal to zero, and then we can do the row reduction, right? So would uh, get rid of this uh, two uh, entries beneath below a. So for example, you would multiply uh, second row by a, second and third row by a, and then multiply the first row by negative d and add it to the second row. Multiply the first row by negative g and add it to the third row. That's what you will. That's what you will get. Um, now this matrix is invertible if and only if the bottom two rows are linearly independent. Right. So when uh, sort of these two rows are not proportional to each other, right? Um, and when does it happen? So it, it happens if the determinant of this uh, two by two matrix. Right, uh, two by two submatrix, right, which is uh, formed by the uh, bottom right uh, two by two uh, table, is not equal to zero. Right. So let's look at this again. Uh, the here uh, over here. So we need to look at this for. So these these rows are linearly independent. If uh, the determinant of this two uh, two by two matrix is linearly independent, excuse me, is not equal to zero. So we can forget about zeros and just focus on this two by two uh, sub matrix here. So we need to uh, figure out, we need to find the uh, condition on these parameters such that the rows are linearly independent. 
right? And uh, which and how to do? We know how to do this for determinants of uh, two by two matrices. So we, the determinant should not be equal to zero. There's a lengthy calculation, as you can see here. So you would multiply a e minus b d by this number, and then minus a h minus b g times that number. If you like, you can open up the parentheses; it will look like uh, like this. Um, now, here we assume that a is not equal to zero, and so this is true that if this thing in the parentheses is not equal to zero, right? Um, and uh, sort of by analogy with what we have, what we talked before, the uh, the the so since in other words, the condition uh, of invertibility of this of the whole three by three matrix boils down to the fact that this expression here is not equal to zero, and we call this expression the determinant of this uh, three by three matrix. So. Um, the if I assume that a is not equal to zero, right? Um, then the matrix matrix is invertible, provided that this expression with a uh, six cubic terms, right? This six uh, monomials with the products of uh, three uh, letters is not not equal to zero. So let's try to understand a bit better how the determinants are computed. So in the two by two case. You can sort of derive this mnemonic rule. So you first you take you make a multi multiply the entries on the diagonal of the matrix A D, and then subtract the product of matrix in the it's called anti-diagonal, right? So the, the 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 other the diagonal that goes from bottom left to top right. Uh, in three by three case, uh, it's a bit more subtle, but you can still uh, kind of figure it out. So you would uh, well. All these six terms have a sort of nice uh, kind of uh, intuitive uh, placement in the uh, in the matrix. So first, you, with a plus sign, you take the product of a uh, of the all the diagonal entries a e i, and then again with the plus sign, you would take the bottom left uh, the g g b f, and then plus c d h. So you, you kind of draw in this. Uh, you can think of this triangle over here. So if you have like there's a there's a triangle formed by these entries, and here there's a triangle formed by those entries. So these triangles enter with plus signs, uh, and then the main diagonal enters with a plus sign. Um, and then so and then there will be three terms which will enter with a negative sign. So it will be the anti-diagonal, and then sort of the two triangles, which are kind of uh, Who's uh, one of one, one of uh, eight edges of which is sort of uh, parallel to the anti-diagonal, and so it's 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 like this line is parallel to this line is parallel to this line. So whenever those triangles they are aligned with the anti-diagonal, you get minus sign, right? And then when uh, they are aligned with the main diagonal, you have plus sign. Uh, this uh, rule can be helpful in practical applications, right? So when you are faced with the determinant of an actual matrix, like with numbers in it, and you need to compute it. Now, uh, you can, and you can proceed by induction. So for the uh, matrix of arbitrary size. So it's this, if the, the determinant of an n by n matrix is the sum of over all ways of choosing n enters of the matrix such that one is in each row and each column uh, of the product of those entries with some signs. And so uh, just if you, if you scroll back here, so see you have you take one element from first row and first, second, first, first column, first row, E is the element from second column, second row, and I is the element from the third column, third row. And here, sort of, you do, do them in different order, right? So, the uh, so G is uh, third row, first column. B is uh, first row, second column, and so on. Uh, and there's certain uh, sign uh, convention which we need to understand. So here's this. Here's that again. 
Uh, so this is the sum, some of the uh, contributions have plus signs, some of contributions have minus signs. So how do we figure this out? Now, given the choice of n entries in an n by n matrix uh, with one uh, in each row and each column, an inversion is a pair of these entries such that the row of the first entry goes before the row of the second, right? So if this happens then, um, but the columns of the first is after the columns of the second. So we, we define the notion of inversion um, when the, for the pair of entries. So in other words, if the number of uh, sort of up arrows that you can draw connecting uh, one entry to another. So in the two by two case, um, in the two by two case, like there are no up arrows, like so uh, sort of uh, me, up and right arrows. So I don't know, these guys are, so, so A is to the left. So the, the column and row of A is to the left um, of the column and row of D. However, here you, you can draw one arrow like this. Right, so you can draw an arrow which goes uh, from bottom left to top right uh, towards B, right? And that's why there is number one here. So uh, the, the product BC acquires uh, the negative sign. Okay, so same thing here. So uh, let's draw those rows, uh, those arrows. So here there are none. Here we can draw two. Here we can draw two. Here we can draw one. One. And here we can draw three. So there are three inversions here, one inversion here, uh, one inversion here, and then so the number of inversions in the in this last three terms is odd. That's why those guys acquire a minus sign and the number of inversions in the first group is even. That's why they, they enter with a plus sign. Uh, yeah, and that's how, that, that's how this works. So let's write the formula. Uh, so the sum uh, over all, so the determinant is the sum over all ways of choosing n entries of the matrix such that one is in each row and each column of the product of those entries times negative one to the power of number of inversions. Or if you like, uh, time, times the parity of inversions, right? If the number of inversions is even, this is the, the, the sign is plus. If the number of inversions is odd, it's the minus. So in the two by two case, it works like this. In three by three case, it works like that. Okay, so um, you should uh, practice with a lot of exercises. Some of them come in the homework. So compute the determinant of this three by three matrix. Um, so it reminds, it should remind you probably the phone, uh, uh, Pad, right, so the the numbers when you dial on the phone, right, or uh, on ATM machine, right. So what is the determinant of this matrix? Well, multiply the diagonal, one times five times nine, forty-five. Then plus this other triangle, uh, seven to six, seven times two times six is eighty-four. Plus four times three times eight, ninety-six minus one times eight times six minus 48, minus two times four times nine minus 72, uh, minus seven times five times three is a negative 105. Well, how much is 45 if we combine all, them, all this together? Well, so, 45 minus 48 is negative 3. 84 minus 72 is plus 12. 96 minus 105 is negative 9. So it all, it all vanishes. Right? So the determinant of this matrix is, is equal to 0. OK, now, obviously, the sort of the complexity of these uh, operations it increases with the size of the matrix. So determinant of this 6 by 6 matrix um, uh, could look like a bit complicated. However, observe that there is this row which contains, which is contained of all zeros. 
So if you remember the definition, there is no way to choose an entry from each row and each column without choosing a zero. So every uh, product uh, in this uh, sum, this big sum, will necessarily contain a, a zero. Uh, so every term in the determinant simply vanishes, and the whole determinant is, determinant is equal to zero. OK. Now, how about this? So see, uh, it's a uh, ma matrix, the upper triangular matrix. You can see it has this uh, echelon form right, with uh, pivots in every column. Uh, now, but it has, to, to our advantage, it has many zeros, right? And if you can see, we need to uh, only focus on those uh, contributions to the determinant, which are non-zero. So there's only one way to choose an entry from each row in each column without choosing a zero, uh, which in this case means you choose the entries al along the diagonal. So the determinant is simply the product of all the diagonal elements, which in this case is 720. Right, so as long as you move off the diagonal, say you want to pick say, this number here, uh, you have to pick one of those other zeros, uh, which would uh, uh, make the corresponding contribution vanish. OK. Now, uh, rescaling a row. So what's, the, what's the, the determinant of this matrix? If we multiply the first row by uh, a, a, a constant lambda. Uh, or more generally, any matrix with no entries above the diagonal. Uh, sorry, uh, excuse me. Yeah, so right. So uh, we'll get back. So if, if we rescale the row, right, we need to multiply by uh, by the coefficient. So and then the so the, the, this coefficient will appear in every uh, in every term, right? In, in in every sum. So for example, we have AEI times GBF, and then everything will be multiplied by lambda. So lambda. So the whole thing, the whole determinant will also be multiplied by by lambda. Right. So, more. Let's talk more about triangular matrices. Uh, any matrix with a uh, no interest above the diagonal, like this, right? So has has the determinant, which is equal to the product of the entries of the diagonal, as we saw in the previous example. Um, since there are no other way of selecting uh, one entry from each row and each column uh, without picking a zero. Okay, now, and then if we take the uh, multiply multiply the uh, the first element, uh, first row by, by 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 lambda, we'll get this contribution, which means that the lambda will factor out. I'm sorry, the slides were a bit switched off, but it's okay. So the determinant of this matrix is lambda times the determinant of that matrix. And uh, yeah, it's true for a square matrix of any size, right? So rescaling a row rescales the determinant by the same factor. And each term in the determinant is a product of entries, uh, one from each row. So therefore, uh, containing exactly one uh, from the rescaled row. And uh, likewise, rescaling of column rescales the determinant by the, uh, the factor which you use to rescale uh, a, a column. Okay, now how about, uh, so uh, if you take uh, in one row, one of the rows can be presented as sum of uh, two vectors, right? So the, what's the determinant of this matrix? So can we uh, sort of split it uh, linearly uh, in the rows, right? So A plus A prime, B plus B prime, C plus C prime in the first row, and some other entries uh, below it. Well, we have the formula, right? The um, formula for the determinant so you can just apply it so each of those six contributions will have uh, uh, this parenthesis right so uh, multiplied by the product that we had before right so and which means that the determinant actually factorizes as well right so uh, so this formula is true so there is a linearity in the rows. So you can add numbers, you can multiply them, 
uh, you can subtract, you can multiply them by constants. So it is true for, uh, for the matrix of any size that the determinant of linear is linear in any given row or column. So if you, uh, if the, uh, so here, here we write them in rows. So we have rows, row R1, R2, and so, et cetera. But then the kth row can be presented as a linear combination of RK and RK prime with coefficients A and B. Then the determinant of this matrix is equal to A times the determinant of this matrix plus B times the determinant of that matrix. Here's this formula again. Each term in the determinant on the left is a product of entries, one from each row, hence exactly one in the kth row. Uh, and, and that's how the formula is justified. So the term in the determinant to the left is the sum of A times the corresponding term in the first determinant to the right, and B times the corresponding term in the second. Uh, so uh, this this applies to linearity in the rows. Right? So we have all, all columns, so we have to sort of stick with the same row. However, what if you if you try to do something different? Say it is true that matrix, the unit ma uh, identity matrix is uh, one zero zero one is the sum of these two, but that is the determinant. Uh, is the following statement true for the for the determinants? Right, so clearly it's not the case, right? Because determinants of these matrices in the right are both zero. Uh, so the determinant is linear in one row or column at a time, but not uh, in the whole matrix at once. Okay, so see here. Um, yeah, so we talked about this before. This matrix is, is determinant is equal to zero, right? Because uh, we can uh, add, we can subtract the uh, first column from the second, and we will have the rows of zeros. Uh, although, but so let's see how it adds up. So we take, uh, use the formula, right, like this, uh, same way as we did this before. Uh, and yeah, so the, the uh, there's a direct cancellation. So there's a plus 12 minus 12 plus 24 minus 24 plus 15 minus 15 and everything cancels off. So any matrix with a repeated row has the determinant zero. As in the previous example, to say the repeated rows are in positions i and j, then for any term in the determinant, say with the selected entries in positions i, x, and j, y, there will be another term with the same selected entries in rows except i and j, um, in all rows except an i, I and j, and in these rows the entries are i, y, and j, x. And because of the rule, right, so of the inversions, the, these, these two contributions will enter with the opposite signs, right, so the i, s, and j rows are, are, are the same, so the terms are the products of the same numbers. But one of them will enter with plus sign, uh, the, the other will enter with the minus sign, because one will have one more inversion than the other. And so it will have one more arrow that goes bottom left to top right, so they will cancel. Okay, now how about these two? Determinant of matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, and 3, 4, 1, 2. So uh, these are these deter so the first one is two the negative the first determinant is negative two the second determinant is two so we swap the rows what happens when we swap rows you, you, you with the determinant uh, switches signs right so uh, if here the rows go in sequence r one r two r three etc so if, if you swap first and second row we get the minus sign here. Uh, and the reason for this is uh, sort of similar to what we just discussed. 
uh, the if you consider the term in the expansion of the determinant for the matrix on the left, so say it contains entries one x and two y. So x and y just the numbers of the uh, entries in the first row and the second row respectively. Uh, and the term on the uh, right containing entries so one y and two x all at the same time. It's a product of the same numbers and uh, all the same uh, and all the same inversions, except that one um, x and two y itself is an inversion if and only if one y and two x is not. Right, so uh, there is an extra sign that comes in this way. Uh, yeah. So how about linear transformations? If you add a multiple of one row to another, so take a determinant of the matrix with rows R1 through Rn, and then replace it with this matrix, where the second row is R2 plus CR1. Well, from linearity, you can deduce that this is the case. But because these two, these matrices, his, uh, this matrix has two repeated rows, R1 and R1, as we discussed, this, this, this determinant will vanish. So therefore, uh, the, the, uh, the determinant will not change if we uh, do the linear combination of the rows. Okay, now let's talk about computing the determinant by the row reduction. So we have learned the following facts. Swapping rows negates the sign of the, the, the determinant. Rescaling a row rescales the determinant by the same factor. And adding a multiple of a row to another does not change the determinant. Determinant of a triangular matrix, uh, in particular if it's an echelon matrix, uh, is the product of the diagonal entries. Uh, so in order to compute the determinant of a matrix, we first row reduce it, and then keep track of any row switches of or rescaling of rows, right? Because that would uh, change the, that will affect the sign, it may affect the sign. And in the end, we multiply together the inverses of the row rescaling factors, uh, the diagonal entries of the final echelon matrix, and this uh, minus one to the number of row swaps. And this will be equal to the, to the determinant of the original matrix. Um, so it will be much, much faster than summing uh, all the terms without, sort of, without doing any, any simplification. So that's how a, a computer is doing it, for example. Now, those elementary matrices that uh, uh, manifest the row reduction, we can we know what their determinants are. So if uh, E, A, M, E swap, and E scale of lambda are elementary matrices for uh, the swap two rows, uh, yeah, so for add a multiple of any other row, uh, one row to another, swap rows and rescale lambda respectively, then as we discussed, the adding multiple of a row to another does not change the determinants. So the determinant of this matrix is one. The determinant, determinant of the swap matrix is negative one. And the determinant of the scaling matrix is, is lambda. And then from the previous slide, uh, each uh, is row reduced to the uh, identity in one move. And the determinant of this identity is one. And uh, the effect of that on move is uh, as we discussed above. So when we have the product of, of those elementary matrices, and if M is any square matrix, then uh, the determinant of the product in this order is equal to the product of, of the determinants. Uh, and so th this again sort of follows from what we learned, what we have le learned above, right? So the each row operation changes the determinant by multiplying the determinant of the corresponding uh, elementary by the determinant of the corresponding elementary matrix.
So Ethereum, a matrix is invertible if and only if its determinant is non-zero. Proof, the determinant of a matrix is a, a non-zero multiple of the product of the diagonal enters of its uh, row reduced version. So based on what we learned about invertibility, uh, the, the statement follows. So if this is not zero, if and only if the pivots uh, run down the diagonal. So there is one pivot in each row and each column or the matrix is invertible. Now, uh, if matrices are invertible, two matrices A and B are invertible, then uh, we can several identities uh, are true. So if you multiply them in this order, B inverse A inverse A inverse B, so this is equal to one, to the identity matrix one or I, uh, or if you multiply them in this order. So here sort of A, A inverse A is one, and then we can move it uh, up front and then B inverse B is one. So this is one and similar here, B, B inverse is one and A inverse is one. So because of this, A, B is invertible and B inverse A inverse is also invert, uh, is its inverse. So uh, in other words, uh, when you uh, do the inversion of the product of the matrices, you need to swap the order of the matrices in the product. So A, B inverse is B inverse A inverse. Uh, so if uh, if there's square matrices, then it's enough to guarantee that they're both invertible. And finally, let's talk about determinants and products. So if uh, A and B are any two square matrices, then the product of determinants of these matrices is equal to the determinant of the product. So if any of these matrices is non-invertible, then both are zero. Uh, now, if the matrices are invertible, then A and B can each be row reduced to the identity, right? And that means that we can write A as the product of this elementary row, re row reduction matrices and B as the product of uh, other elementary matrices. And then we can just compose them together like this. So we saw in the, before that the determinant of this uh, product of matrices is equal to product of the, their determinants. Um, from from where it follows that the uh, that a that b is equal to that uh, a b 